Hello all, Yankee Farm Wife here. I know, I know, it is all about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And yes, I am paying attention and there is more material there than anyone can handle, but I can't bring myself to do it. My gut tells me that he has mental health issues and they are earned. His father's assassination when he was young, 15 years of heroin addiction and other assorted drugs, a brain parasite, which I often joke about, but not in regard to him because it actually happened. Only those that I am sure are parasite free. Although members of the media do give me pause. There was that time when I thought I was watching live as a brain worm hit ground zero prefrontal cortex of Jesse Waters' brain. Well, I don't see why any man would vote Democrat. It's not the party of virtue, security. It's not the party of strength. It's definitely not the party of family. And what? to be a, a man and then vote for a woman just because she's a woman is either childish, that person has mommy issues, or they're just trying to be accepted by other women. And I heard the scientists say the other day that when a man votes for a woman, he actually transitions into a woman. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's what the science yeah, says. What more evidence do you need? But with RFK, the conspiracy theories, vaccine phobia, scattered directionless campaign, culminating in him endorsing a man whom he hates and shares not a single value with, plus leaving himself on the ballot in 10 states, which does what? It's just not right. He's not okay. Now, if he was a bully or a putz, a dog and horse murderer, a raging lunatic, a misogynist, or a bought and paid for Supreme Court justice. All fair game. A friend of mine, author by the name of Bob Tart, mentioned last night that his focus in college was Franz Kafka. You may remember his metamorphosis about a man who wakes up one morning and finds he's turning into a bug. I think of Kafka's work as a dark, morose humor. Bob, also a writer, says he's hilarious. <laughs> okay, I can see it. Kafka is absurd. Now, I'm not deeply intellectual like Bob, but I started reflecting on how the United States has become a theater of the absurd. Who could ever believe any of it? For example, Never in a million years, if I were one to wear makeup, would I leave the house with a smeared mess on my face like this. You can't run for president and do your own face. Now, if I buy one of those atrocious hats you peddle in your daily texts to me, will it help you hire a makeup professional? A man who doesn't know how to do his own makeup and worse, when to bring in a pro? Whatever little expect I have for him. <laughs> already in the negative range, decreased by 90% after Trump didn't do his last second mirror check in good lighting before he stepped in front of the camera. If that doesn't speak to a deterioration of his faculties, I don't know what does. I'd be embarrassed for him if I cared, but you know, <laughs> convicted felon and all, crotch grabber, sex offender, blah, blah, blah. I know, Donald, you think you had us fooled into believing your apricot complexion was a natural phenomenon and not a desperate and ineffective struggle to look youthful. And really, some men really do retain their reddish blonde locks well into their 90s and none of them look absurd with a giant comb over on a windy day. Nope, not even you, Donald. But please, if you're going to try to fool the basses, consistency is key. If you're gonna go orange, stay orange. Blotchy? Do blotchy every time. We may interpret it as a skin disease, but at least we will comprehend what we are dealing with. Right, Captain? There is, however, something much worse than a bad foundation day, and it's leaving home without a freaking clue. So a vice presidential candidate walks into a donut shop. No. That's, that's not the start of a joke. That is actually what J.D. Vance did yesterday. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> good, good. Uh, the zoo has come to town. I'm sorry, man. Okay, yeah. She, 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 she doesn't want to be on film, guys, so just cut her out of anything. Appreciate that, man. Um, I'm J.D. Vance. I'm running for vice president. Good to see you. Okay. We're going to do two dozen. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah. And just a you know, random sort of stuff here. How long are we working? I've been here since uh, the beginning of July. Okay. But this year. Okay. Good. How about you, sir? Uh, uh, almost two years. Okay. Good. How long is it? Everything. Just everything. Yeah, I mean, a lot of glaze, tears, some okay. sprinkle stuff, some of these cinnamon rolls, just whatever makes sense. How long has this place been around? About four years. About four years? Okay. How long have you been here? Uh, a little over six months. Okay, good. Yeah, it's, uh, well, we selected this place. I didn't know if it had been here for 20 years or four years or, you know, you never know. Bob Tart, is this absurd enough for you and Kafka, even without the giant cockroach? I mean, dude, this is painful to watch. First of all, JD, <laughs> if you had to introduce yourself, just know that they already knew who you were. It's just that they either weren't impressed or didn't care. Second, you ask the server to give you whatever feels right. What the hell is that? You put a lot of pressure on a server to guess at what you want. Do you think donut shop employees have psychic powers? Also, if you're ordering a dozen donuts, you order a dozen donuts. Cinnamon buns are not donuts. They're a completely separate thing. So you tell the pork counter person exactly which 12 donuts you want. You don't make them guess. And only then do you ask for your specialty items. There is etiquette involved. You were clearly trying to use a donut purchase as a media event, and it failed the moment an employee said she did not want to be on film with you. That was the moment where you should have shut it down, taken your donuts, and go off to bother a Starbucks barista. They have been trained to deal with prima donnas. They can deal with you. But really, if you want a donut, walk in, be specific, take the boxes and get the hell out of the way, or send in one of your servants who has a clue. I know you are trying so hard to come across as a regular guy who, quote, has a wife and kids and likes to hang out like any other guy, but I don't know any other guy who doesn't know how to buy a freaking dozen donuts. RFK Jr. knows how to order donuts. My eight-year-old granddaughter orders like a pro. She doesn't walk in and say, I'm Phoebe May, I'm in third grade, and I want to be Taylor Swift when I grow up. She says, may I have one jelly, one glazed, and a dozen chocolate munchkins, please, like a normal person. And by the way, Taylor Swift knows how to put in an order at a donut shop. Tim Waltz also can successfully order donuts. Boys. If you want to be the leaders of the free world, you got to put in more effort. If you can't get your makeup right, if you can't figure out proper donut ordering etiquette, how are you going to deal with being the keepers of the nuclear code or keeping Putin from taking over Europe? Or even choose what brand of paper towel to fling at flood victims? For myself, I'm going to have to trust the makeup free guy with the correct donut, believe you me. It is clear who has the upper hand out there in the real world. I know, you can't be best, I know that, but by God, you gotta be better. Okay, maybe not better, maybe just normal. No, never mind. I think I'd be happy with just a little less weird. Oh crap, <laughs> I just thought of the perfect beginning of a joke. A giant cockroach walks into a donut shop and orders a dozen donuts.